Okay, guys, so in my last video, we talked about improving the Brex nestable accordion. Today, I'm going to talk about improving the Brex nestable tabs. And in some ways, it's actually a bit easier because of the way the state is managed, uh, which we'll go into. But what I've got on the screen here is at the very top, I've got the standard Brex nestable tabs. So if I go into my Brex editor, wherever I am, there we are. If I just go into my Brex editor and look for tabs and do a nestable tabs, it's basically that. So straight entered straight into the editor. That's what we're looking at at the top of the page. Uh, and what I'm going to show you is we can click on these. Everything works fine. There's no animation in the change of state like there is with the accordion. So we don't need to worry about managing our own state. Um, we can just use the normal bricks open state to, to manage this, which is good. Um, again, if we look at the DOM, there is absolutely zero consideration for accessibility. So these are actually just divs. That's a basic text. That's a, a div. Um, there's no ARIA controls, ARIA labels. There's, there's nothing here that makes it accessible, which means I cannot use my keyboard to tab to it and I can't use the enter key to control it, um, and screen readers will have difficulty with this. So the first example of the change is below it, and you can see I've got an icon that animates here, and we can change the state. So I'm clicking on those, and I'm changing state. I can also tab to a tab. So using the tab key, press the enter key, it changes the state. Tab to the next one, press the enter key, it changes the state. So we've got accessibility there. We also have a bunch of ARIA stuff here happening, and we've got our buttons. So what was up here with this div, we've actually turned that into a button, which is what's making this work. So I don't need any additional JavaScript to manage this because uh, the Bricks open control um, it gets added immediately. It's not after a animation time, so I don't have to worry about that. So that's really good. So all I've done is change the divs to buttons here. Um, I have got some JavaScript which will run to uh, put the ARIA controls property there and the ARIA expanded. So if I click on these, you can see that's now expanded of true. Click on the next one, that's now an expanded of false, and the next one's true. So that's all happening. Um, so in summary, our div is now a button. We have an ARIA controls and ARIA expanded. All right now, the ARIA controls is a ID. And if we look at our panes down here, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Hitting, 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 button. There's the tab content. If we look at the first pane, so this is the default pane that gets entered by Bricks. Um, we've got a role of region, which I'll talk about. And we've got an ID of uh, this uh, unique ID here, JAR6N. If we look back up at the button, it controls JAR6N. Um, so that's telling it that this button controls that region. All right. And we've also got an ARIA labeled by with an ID on the region. And that is looking at the heading here. There's a uh, basic text in here, which is a heading, and we've got an ID on that. So this label for that region is this title one. So it's all ready to go as far as accessibility goes, as far as I know. I'm actually enjoying learning about this accessibility as I go, so I think it's fantastic. So, all right, so so that's the first one. And then um, I'm going to show you how that works here, the JavaScript. And then what I thought I might do is create a vertical version of it just using a BEM modifier. So we've got the same thing. All we're doing is adding a BEM modifier, and now we have vertical tabs. Okay, so that's what we're going to just look at now over to the editor. So let's look at the first one here. In fact, we're going to look at the default uh, structure here first. So that's the default nestable tabs. If we have a look at our title, uh, our title is just a div or a block. Okay, it's actually a div. I'm not sure what. Oh, display block, sorry. So it's a div. Um, and then inside that, we've just got a basic text. And that's our structure for our tab menu. So each of these is just a div with a basic text in it. That's it. That's the structure of that. 
Now, to get our buttons working, what we've done here is on our titles, we've told it to set the custom tag to be a button. All right. We've then added a block inside there. So a bricks block. You can also use a div and set it to 100% if you want. So we've got added a brick block in there and we've changed the tag to be an H3. Uh, and we can't just use a heading widget here because we want to have two things inside there. I mean, we could, but we'd have to use um, uh, you know, a custom code inside that heading. So we just created a standard div or block um, and told that to be an H3. And then we put our heading text as a basic text box inside of that. And we put our icon inside of that. So the structure is a little different. So instead of just having a div with a basic text, we've changed our div into a button. We've put a block inside of that, made that an H3, and then put our heading and our icon inside of that. So that's the structural change there. All right. The panes, all we've had to do on the panes is change the attributes. So if we go into the attributes here and add a ARIA attribute, not an ARIA attribute, sorry, a role attribute of region. Could do this in JavaScript, but there's no need to because we can access this via Bricks. So that is the only thing that we change on that uh, content there. So if we look at the tab content in the original, we just got a pane with rich text. In our enhanced, we've got exactly the same, but on the pane, we've added our role equals region, All right? So that's the structure. Now the, I'll come back to the vertical a little bit later. Now the JavaScript is a little bit easier because of the way these things work. I'm going to grab all that JavaScript there. I'm going to chuck it into a VS Code because it's too hard to read in the Bricks Reader and in the Bricks Editor. So basically, uh, same deal. We're just looking for our IDs for our selectors. Uh, sorry, no, our classes for our selectors. Uh, we've got a random string generator here, which I'll talk about. Uh, and basically, we're getting all of the tabs. So that tabs is all of these uh, tabs that have enhanced tabs as a class on it. So the whole tab group, that's all of those. Uh, and then we're going to get all of our wrappers. So all of the panes and all of the heading text wrappers. So that's all of uh, the within our um, enhanced tabs, that is our panes and within our headings our heading text. So that's actually a text box there. We're getting the that the IDs of those. So we're going to get a reference to all of those. And what we're going to do, because we need for our ARIA attributes, we need IDs. And so we don't have to force you to make up IDs and put IDs on every single uh, element. Um, and Bricks by default will do that unless you tell it to not put IDs on there in the settings, which I generally do. Uh, so we want this to work regardless of your settings. So what this is going to do is going to go through all the panes, all of those heading, heading text wrappers. If they don't have an ID, then we're going to generate their random ID with a prefix here and our random string generator. And what we end up with is these IDs like this WPEJIR6N, WPZ08ME. So there's just random strings that we've created. So we've got some ID to work with. All right. And then what we've got is a simple, simple function here where it's going to go through all of the tabs. It's going to get all of our titles and panes. And if it has the bricks open class on it, we're going to set our ARIA expanded to true. Otherwise, we're going to set our ARIA expanded to false. So this is going to, um, uh, I guess, indicate uh, to, to the screen readers um, on both our title and the tab that it controls or the pane that it controls, whether they're expanded or not. Okay, so that's all that does. Now, down here, we have a, for each of our tab groups again, we're gonna get our titles and our panes. Now, we have to do this a little differently than our previous video, and I'll show you why. And the reason for that is because of the structure. So if we look at our tab menu and tab content, um, they're not, a parent child relationship with the accordions content was a child underneath the actual uh, heading uh, where in this case they're they're siblings they're not parent child so what we have to do is get a list and treat these differently so what we're doing here is we're basically getting a, a list of all the, for those tab for that tab group getting a list of the 
uh, sorry, links to all of the uh, references to all of the titles and panes. Uh, we, we're linking, we're looping through the amount of titles that we have. We're getting our first title and our first pane. So we've got a reference to a first title, first pane. So in here, that would be, we expand those out a little bit. So this title here would relate to that pane. Uh, this title here would relate to that pane because of the order that they're in. All right, so we're going to get the first one uh, on our first iteration. Uh, from our heading, we want to get a reference. So we want to get the actual text selector. Uh, and then we want to get the ID from it. So the ID there would be, if we look at our heading three there, there is our text there. So our heading text, the ID is that. Uh, so we're going to get that ID. And then we're going to put that on the pane as our labeled by uh, ID. So that links that heading to this pane down here. Okay. And that's how that's working there. And then on the title, we want to set the ARIA controls to the ID of the pane. So we're doing the opposite. The label by is telling the pane that it's got a heading, or sorry, a title, which is linked back to the heading. And on the heading, we're telling it has, uh, it is controlling a pane with that ID. So that's, it's kind of a loop in that sense. Um, we're then adding a event listener click to our titles, and this is so we can update our ARIA expanded. So because we don't have to control the state like we did with uh, accordions, uh, all we're interested in is updating whether it's expanded or not. So we don't have to add additional classes um, to indicate the state. We just have to set the ARIA expanded uh, role on it. And then down here we have a timeout. So this is the when the when this code executes. Um, there's, I noticed that there's there's a little bit of a delay, very slight delay in rendering from Bricks. So what happens is it doesn't have the Bricks open class on the open elements uh, immediately when the DOM loads. There is a delay before it adds it. So we basically set a 100 millisecond uh, timeout, and then that allows Bricks to add its uh, Bricks open classes, and then we update our ARIA expanded. Okay, and the same here. So when we click on it, we want to give Bricks time to update its state before we run our ARIA expanded to check what state that should be. And that's pretty much it. That's how the JavaScript works. Okay, so the next we're going to look at is the vertical. Now, it's pretty simple. It is exactly the same as the horizontal version or the default version. But what we've done, if we look at our CSS here, We've made all of these state, um, or you know, the flex properties, the uh, writing order, all that sort of stuff. We've made those variables. So all we have to do there is uh, on our enhanced tabs, dash dash vertical, dash dash being your modifier. All we have to do is our flex direction row. So our entire tab is now a row instead of a column. Um, the menu flex direction as a column. So that's this menu here. So that to go, that's normally a row. Well, that to turn into a column. Uh, we want to set the tab menu width to auto. So this is actually a block. Uh, so we want to set that to auto so it doesn't go to 50% of the width of that flex row. Uh, we're going to set our flex direction on our heading. So that's the heading inside of that box to column. And we're going to set our heading writing mode to vertical LR, which flips the, uh, the text around vertically. Uh, we're going to change the state. So in our active state, we want the arrow to be pointing to the right, uh, as opposed to active state up here where the arrow is pointing to the bottom. So we want to transform our icon by default, rotate it to the right, and our active, we want to rotate it back to pointing down. So it's just very simple CSS variable overrides for our modifier here. And that's it. That's the entire video done. Um, I will export this as a template and link to it in the description so you can play with it. Um, I will say that I probably should mention previously um, that I am using a framework. Uh, it's not a CSS, but the CSS variables that I'm using are the same as what you'd find in ACSS. So 
uh, what you might find when you use if you're not using ACSS, some of these things here uh, may not work for you. For example, the space S, you might have to change those and text L, uh, you might have to just change those to values that uh, work with your framework. Um, if you're not using ACSS or a framework which has these same variable names. So um, yeah, that's it. I will export this now and stop this here. So if you like this, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Thanks guys.